Hello and happy holidays and happy new year. I'm the guitar slinger. I hope you guys are doing today. I'm going to go over 10 things I wish that I knew as a beginner or 10 things that you should know as a beginner guitar player. So the first one I wanted to go over was tuning your guitar properly. And the reason for that, this is more projected towards uh, younger, younger people getting into playing instruments. Some people don't know how to do this properly and they try to just play. You want to know how to tune your guitar, but not by ear. You want to do it with an actual tuner. Stop by the music store, grab a tuner and use that. So the first couple of these are going to be kind of pretty obvious, but as a beginner, you should know how to tune your guitar properly. So number two is going to be how to restring your guitar properly. Um, there's going to be times where you're going to break your strings and the guitar store isn't going to be open 24 hours a day. So it's really handy to have a, a extra thing of strings just laying around that you can kind of use for that. I usually get extra high E strings, but when you're starting out, you may break like pretty much every string. When I only pretty much break high E strings now, but back in the day, it would be, I would break like probably all, all of the strings broke on me. Let's say that, not just the high E string, but most likely you'll just have to replace the one. Like that's like the odds of two breaking at once is pretty slim. <laughs> Number three is going to be how to intonate your guitar properly. I have a video actually, it's my first actual official guitar tutorial video that I've ever, ever done. So if you want to check that out, that'd be pretty cool. I'll have it right up here for you guys. The purpose of intonation is the guitar isn't a very accurate instrument. The open strings that you tune to, those ones are accurate because you're tuning to the specific note. But along the fretboard, when you press on the notes on the frets, that's when um, they won't be perfect. So to try to get it as best as we can, they're never going to be perfect. We will adjust the saddles on our bridge. I'll probably put a picture up here but there's like a saddle and you adjust the saddle on each string so that the chords higher up the fretboard will come out in tune properly. On a Telecaster, you can only adjust two strings at one time. If you notice on their bridges, you can only adjust three saddles, but two strings sit on one saddle. So it's kind of weird, but yeah, that's how it works. So the fourth one will be understanding truss rod adjustments. In my opinion, it's best to go to the guitar store and just get this done because it takes a little while for, for the truss rod to adjust properly. Technically, you have to have the strings off to do it. Well, as long as there's no tension on the strings, you could do it, but it's just, it'll take like one or two days maybe to, to get the truss rod to, to adjust properly. You can do this yourself if you want to, but like it's a gamble when you're trying to learn it too. It takes so long for it to set. I just I, I would just bring it to to a guitar store and get it done properly that way. Another thing is I would go to the guitar store to get your guitar set up properly. Now, what I mean by by this is sometimes the higher notes up the fretboard, they don't sound proper. So if you go to a guitar store and you ask for a guitar setup, they will intonate and do all of that stuff for you. They'll also make sure that your action is is okay and that it's not going to be too high for you when you're playing when you're learning. Uh, so for number five, I would recommend definitely learning the pentatonic scale. And the reason for that is just to learn how to pluck singular notes properly. Lots of times when I'm teaching people, they struggle lots with just playing one string. They have problems trying to just focus on one string at a time. So what I would do is focus on how it sounds, make sure it actually sounds like proper, like how a note should sound. It shouldn't sound like it's buzzing. Lots of times when I see people, they're not playing it right or they're not pressing it down hard enough. One thing is you're going to get calluses. And the other thing is, is that you might get strains, like your hand might get strained or like it might get kind of tense because you're trying to learn how to do these chords and stuff like that. So I would, you know, do it as much as you can. The more you practice guitar, the better you'll get at it. That's what I'm saying. Um, definitely focus on holding your pick. You need to know how to hold your pick properly. You need to know how to pick 
properly. If you want to learn how to do finger picking, learn how to do it properly. Don't, you know, do it like a bass player. You know what I mean? Learn these techniques properly is what I'm trying to say. You want to know how to do this in the basics form so that it'll help you later on down down the road when you actually start playing better, when you actually start getting better at, at the instrument. Uh, the sixth one is going to be tools that make your kind of life easier. Um, and what I mean by that is tools for intonation, uh, tools to restring your guitar. Um, yeah, tools are great. Tools are are, are are great. Yeah, it kind of sucks not having the right tools for stuff. So make sure you have the right tools for what you have, for what you need, is what I'm trying to say. Don't worry about how fancy of a setup you have right now. Don't worry about buying fancy gear you know, when you start, that stuff will come with time. Although you can spend whatever you want with your money. Like, I'm not going to tell you what you can and cannot do with your money. But I would strongly recommend not worrying about it too much when you start. Just worry about learning. Like, just learn as much as you can. Um, so I'm going to go briefly just over what I was talking about. Learn what you want at first. Don't worry about learning musical theory at first when you're getting into guitar you might not even know if you want to continue learning it or if you might want to switch to a different instrument when you're starting off i would definitely recommend doing nine or ten gauge strings i think nines are probably the most common ones so that's what i would definitely start practicing on um and also the reason for that is because they're they're a lot lighter than but after you go up in gauge, they obviously get heavier. This one will be kind of funny. Boiling your strings won't do anything. So if you think you could just take your strings or you think you could take you, you think you could just take a little cleaner on your guitar, guitar strings to try to clean it, that won't work. None of that will work. Don't boil your strings, don't try to clean it. Don't do anything thing like that. You can clean your fretboard but don't clean the actual strings itself. Like it won't do anything. It's not going to like, don't even attempt it. It'll just be a huge waste of time. Like it's just, it's really, really bad. Don't do it. Um, yeah, this will be number 10. This will be after you decide if you want to continue uh, learning guitar or not. After you've learned some songs, you've decided whether or not you want to go ahead with this as soon as you can go to the conservatory of music. I definitely wish I went to the conservatory when I was younger. I live in a small town, so we don't have a conservatory here, unfortunately. Also, uh, if you're learning from the conservatory, don't be afraid to learn from YouTube videos as well. You want a teacher, is what I'm trying to say. You want to have a teacher so they can fill in the holes that a self-taught guitar player is going to have because I'm a self-taught guitar player. It's going to happen. There's going to be holes in places that you don't want and you you don't want that. You want to you wanna make sure that you know what you're doing. The very last one will be number 11 and this is kind of like a bonus one. You definitely want to learn how to stretch your fingers the right way. And what I mean by this, by stretching your fingers the right way, is you want to learn how to do it without actually moving your finger like this. If you do it, if you stretch your fingers like this, you're actually more likely to pull tendons and stuff like that. So you really want to, you want to do is you want to lay it flat on the table and you want to take your one finger and put one side to it and then kind of push. Count to three or four seconds and then do the, and then let go. Do the other side count to four seconds do the other side i hope the video was helpful thanks for watching i'm the guitar slinger if you found any of this information helpful and you want to see more content make sure to subscribe hit the like button and, and comment and do all that stuff uh thank you anyways have a good one